from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live in San Jose at our event, Big Data SV. I'm Lisa Martin, my co-host is George Gilbert, and we are down the street from the Strata Data Conference. We are at a really cool venue, Forager Eatery Tasting Room. Come down and join us, hang out with us. We've got a cocktail partay tonight. We also have an interesting briefing from our analysts on Big Data Trends tomorrow morning. Want to welcome back to theCUBE now, one of our CUBE VIPs and alumna, Tendu, Tendu Yogurtu, the CTO at SyncSort. Welcome back. Thank you. Hello, Lisa. Hi, George. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's our pleasure to have you back. So, what's going on at SyncSort? What are some of the big trends as CTO that you're seeing? Um, in terms of the big trends that we are seeing, and SyncSort has grown a lot. In the last 12 months, we actually uh, uh, doubled our revenue. It has been uh, really on a very successful both organic and inorganic growth path. Uh, and we have uh, more than 7,000 customers now. So it's a great uh, uh, pool of customers that we are able to uh, talk and see the trends and how they are trying to adapt to the digital disruption and make data as part of their core strategy. So data is no longer an enabler, and in all of the enterprise we are seeing data becoming the core strategy. This uh, reflects in the four uh, mega trends. They are all connected to enable business as well as uh, operation analytics. Cloud is one, uh, definitely. We are seeing more and more cloud adoption. Even our financial services, healthcare, and uh, banking customers are now, uh, they have, uh, a couple of clusters running uh, in the cloud, in public cloud, uh, multiple workloads, Hi hybrid seems to be the new uh, standard, uh, and uh, it comes with also challenges. Uh, governance, uh, IT governance, as well as data governance is uh, a major challenge, and also uh, scoping and planning uh, for the workloads in the cloud uh, continues to be a challenge as well. Uh, our uh, general strategy for all of the product uh, portfolio is to have our products uh, in a following design once and deploy anywhere strategy. So whether it's a standalone environment on Linux or running on uh, Hadoop uh, or Spark or running on-premise or in the cloud, regardless of the cloud provider, we are enabling the same application with no changes to run all of these uh, environments, uh, including hybrid. Uh, then uh, we are seeing the uh, streaming uh, trend uh, with the connected devices, with the, uh, the digital uh, disruption and uh, so much data being generated, uh, being able to stream and uh, uh, process data on the edge uh, with the internet of things. And uh, in order to address uh, the use cases that SyncSort uh, uh, is uh, focused on, uh, we are really providing uh, um, more on the change data capture and uh, near real-time and real-time data replication to the uh, next generation analytics environments and big data environments. We launched last year our change data capture CDC uh, product offering with uh, data integration. And uh, we continue to strengthen that, uh, that with vision merger. We had data replication, real-time data replication capabilities and uh, uh, we are uh, now seeing uh, even uh, Kafka da a data bus uh, becoming a consumer of this data, not just keeping the data, data lake fresh, uh, but really uh, publishing the changes uh, from multiple uh, diverse set of sources and publishing into a Kafka data bus and making it available uh, for applications and uh, analytics in the uh, data pipeline. So, the third trend that we are seeing is around data science, and uh, if you notice uh, this morning's uh, keynotes, it was all about machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, how do we make use of data science? And uh, it was uh, very interesting for me because uh, we see uh, uh, everyone talking about the challenge of how do you prepare the data and how do you deliver the trusted data for uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence use and uh, deep learning. Because if, you're bad, uh, if you are using bad data and uh, creating your models based on bad uh, data, then the insights you get are also impacted. 
Uh, we definitely offer our products both on the data integration and data quality side to uh, prepare the data, cleanse, match, and deliver the trust data set uh, for data scientists and make their life easier. easier. And uh, another area of focus for 2018 is can we also add supervised learning to this? Because uh, with the Trillium quality uh, domain experts that we have now in SyncSort, we have a lot of domain expertise in the field we can infuse to machine learning algorithms and uh, connect the data profiling capabilities we have with the data quality uh, capabilities, recommending business rules for data scientists and uh, helping them automate the mandate tasks with recommendations. And the last but uh, the not least uh, uh, trend is uh, data governance. And data governance is almost uh, an umbrella focus for everything we are doing at SyncSort because everything uh, uh, about the cloud trend, the streaming and the data science and uh, uh, developing that next generation analytics environment for our customers depends on uh, the data governance. It is, in fact, a business imperative. And uh, regulatory compliance use cases uh, drives uh, more uh, importance to data governance. For example, um, general data protection uh, regulation in Europe, GDPR. Just a few months uh, away. Just a few months, yeah. May 2018. It is in the mind of every C-level executive. It's not just uh, for uh, European uh, companies, but every enterprise has European data uh, sourced uh, in their environment. So compliance is a, a, a big driver of governance. And we look at governance in uh, multiple aspects. Security and assuring data is available in a secure way is one aspect. And uh, delivering the high quality data cleansing, matching. The uh, example Hilary Mason uh, this morning gave in the keynote about how the context matters in terms of the uh, searches of her name uh, was very interesting because you really want to deliver that high quality data uh, uh, in the enterprise, uh, trusted data set, preparing that. Our uh, Trillium quality for big data, uh, we launched uh, Q4. Uh, that product is generally available now. And actually, uh, we are in production with very large uh, deployment. Uh, uh, so that's one area of focus. And the third area is uh, how do you create visibility? The farm to table yeah, view of your name data. Yeah, the of your talk. I love yes, that. Yes, yeah. thank you. So tomorrow I have a talk uh, at 2.40, uh, uh, March 8 also. I'm so happy it's on the Women's uh, Day uh, that's that right. I'm talking. So. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's farm, get a aspect. farm to table view of your data is the name of your talk. Track lin data lineage from source to analytics. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about that. It's all about creating more visibility because uh, for audit reasons, uh, for uh, understanding how many copies of my data is created, uh, where did my data uh, uh, ha have been, and who accessed it. Creating that visibility is very important. And the uh, last couple of years, we saw everyone was focused on uh, how do I create a data lake and make my data accessible, break the data silos, and uh, liberate my data from uh, multiple platforms, legacy platforms that the enterprise might have. Once that happened, everybody started worrying about how do I create consumable data set and how do I manage this data because uh, uh, data has been on the legacy platforms like mainframes, IBM i-series, has been on relational data stores. Uh, it is in uh, cloud, uh, a, a gravity of data uh, originating in the cloud is uh, increasing. It's originating from mobile. Hadoop vendors uh, like uh, Hortonworks and Cloudera, they are creating visibility to what happens within the Hadoop framework. So we are uh, deepening our uh, integration uh, with the uh, Cloudera Navigator. That was our announcement uh, last week. Uh, we already have integration both with uh, Hortonworks, Atlas, and Cloudera Navigator. This is one step further where we actually publish what happened to every single granular level of data at the field level with uh, all of the transformations that data have been through outside the cluster. So that visibility is now published to Navigator itself, 
we also publish it uh, through the RESTful APIs. So governance is a very uh, strong uh, and critical initiative uh, for all of the businesses and uh, uh, we are playing into security aspect as well as uh, data lineage and uh, tracking aspect and uh, the quality aspect. So this sounds like um, some, like a, extremely capable infrastructure service so that you know there's it's trusted data but do can you sell that to an economic buyer alone or do you go in in conjunction with another solution like anti money laundering for banks or you know what are the sort of what are the key things that they place enough value on that they would spend you know budget on it yes uh, absolutely usually uh, it, the, the use cases may originate like anti-money laundering, which is very common, uh, fraud detection. And uh, uh, it ties to getting the single view of an entity. Uh, because in, in anti-money laundering, you want to understand uh, the single view of your customer ultimately. So there is uh, usually uh, another uh, uh, solution that might be in the picture. Uh, we are uh, providing the visibility of the data as well as that single view of the entity, whether it's the customer view in this case, and uh, or the product view in the, in uh, some of the use cases by delivering uh, uh, the matching capabilities uh, and uh, the cleansing capabilities, the deduplication capabilities in addition to the accessing and integrating the data. Okay. Um, are you, when you go into a customer, and you know, recognizing that we still have tons of silos, um, and you know we're realizing it's it's a lot harder to put everything in one repository. Um, are we? How do you sort of? How do customers tell you they want to prioritize what they're bringing in to the repository, or even what do, do, do they want to work on that's in a continu continuously flowing in? So it depends on the business use case. Yeah. And usually uh, at the time that we are working with the customer, they selected that top priority use case. And uh, the risk uh, and the anti-money laundering or uh, um, for insurance companies, uh, we are seeing a trend, for example, building the dark data marketplace uh, as that centralized data marketplace con con concept. So depending on the business case, um, Many of our insurance uh, customers uh, in US, for example, they are creating the data marketplace and they are uh, working with near real time and uh, micro batches. In Europe, Europe seems to be a, a bit uh, uh, ahead of the game in some cases, like Hadoop adoption was slow, but suddenly they went uh, right into the kind of streaming uh, use cases. We are seeing more directly streaming and keeping it fresh and uh, more util utilization of the Kafka and messaging frameworks and the data bus. And, and in that case, where, where they're sort of skipping the um, batch-oriented yes. approach, um, how do they keep track of history? Um, it's still uh, uh, in uh, most of the cases uh, micro batches, yeah. and the metadata is uh, still associated uh, with the data. Yeah. So there is an analysis of the uh, historical uh, what happened to that data. I mean, the tools like ours and uh, the vendors come into picture to keep track of that, basically. Oh, so in other words, by by knowing what happened as operationally to the data, yes. that paints a picture of uh, history. Exactly, exactly. Interesting. And for the governance, we usually also partner, for example, uh, we partner with Calibra Data Governance Platform, we partnered with ASG uh, for uh, creating that uh, business rules and the technical metadata and uh, providing to the business users, uh, not just to the IT data infrastructure. And on the Hadoop side, we partner with uh, Cloudera and Hortonworks and uh, uh, very closely uh, to complete that picture for the customer because nobody is uh, just interested on what happened to the data in Hadoop or in mainframe or in uh, my uh, relational uh, uh, data uh, data warehouse. So they are really trying to see what's happening on premise in the cloud, multiple clusters, traditional environments, legacy systems, and trying to get that uh, big picture view. So on that, getting enabling a business to have that, you know, we'll say in marketing, 360 degree view of data, knowing that there's so much potential for data to be analyzed to drive 
business decisions that might open up new business models, new revenue streams, increased profit. What are you seeing as a CTO of Singtor when you go in to meet with a customer, data silos, how, how do, when you're talking to a chief data officer, how, what's the cultural, I guess, not shift, but really journey that they have to go on to start opening up other organizations of the business to have access to data so they really have that broader 360 degree view. What's that cultural challenge that they have to journey, they have to go on? Yes, chief data officers are actually uh, very good partners for us because uh, uh, usually chief data officers are trying to uh, break the silos of data and uh, make sure that the data is liberated for the business use cases. Uh, in the, um, uh, still most of the time, the infrastructure and the cluster, whether uh, it's the deployment in the cloud versus on-premise, it's owned by the IT infrastructure. And uh, the business lines of business are really the consumers and the clients of that. CDO in that sense almost mitigates and uh, uh, connects to those uh, line of businesses with the IT infrastructure with the same goals for the business, right? They have to worry about the compliance. They have to worry about uh, uh, creating multiple copies of the data. They have to worry about the security of the data and availability of the data. So CDOs actually help uh, so we are very good partners with the CDOs in that sense. And uh, uh, we also usually have uh, IT infrastructure owner uh, in the room uh, when we are talking uh, uh, with our customers because they have a big stake. They are like the gatekeepers of the data to make sure that it is uh, accessed by the uh, by the right folks, right that folks that so in the, uh, in the uh, business. Sounds like they're in the role of maybe good cop, bad cop, or maybe mediator. <laughs> well, Tendu, I wish we had more time. Thanks so much for coming back to theCUBE. And like you said, you're speaking tomorrow at Strata Conference on International Women's Day. Get a farm to table view of your data. Love the title. Good luck Thank with you. that tomorrow, and we look forward to seeing you back Thank on theCUBE. Thank you, I look forward to coming back and uh, uh, letting you know about the more exciting both organic innovations and uh, acquisitions. All right, we look forward to that. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host, George Gilbert. We are live at our event, Big Data SV in San Jose. Come down and visit us. Stick around, and we will be right back with our next guest after a short break. Thank you.